Hello and welcome to the next video in this series. In this video, we are going to learn how the function that you see on the screen is actually executed by a computer. Uh, if you remember, in the previous video, we talked about uh, memory, uh, how it works, gave a general overview of the RAM, which consisted of the program section, stack, and the heap. Um, and we showed a very simple program and how it's executed in memory. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous video, uh, please do before this one because it will it, it may me it may make less sense uh, without it. I'll put a link in the description. So so now, in order to understand how a more complex program is executed by the computer, let's first take a look at how we do things as human beings, and a lot of the things that are in the computer will make much more sense that way. So let's do that. All right. So let's say we are. Uh, planning to take a trip to Europe and in order to do so usually for stuff like this we sit down and make plans for it because they are more complex so we sit down and we say okay we want to make go to Europe uh, let me activate my pen so go to Europe is our end goal but before we are able to do that in order to go to Europe we need plane tickets But in order to get the plane tickets, we need to have a hotel over there. So when we go there, we're just not, uh, you know, hanging about. And in order to do that, we need days off work. So we need days off. And before we take our, the days off, we need the budget. So let's say save $10,000. So we, we have this list and uh, we, we start planning and we start doing these specific tasks in order that we, from the top to the bottom. So first we try to save $10,000. So we do this one first and we, we, we uh, scratch it from the list. Now we can ask for days off from work. We do that. Now we can actually find a hotel to stay uh, and we can take that off the list and then we can buy our plane tickets and eventually go to Europe. And we need to do them in that order. Uh, this in computer science is called a stack. And the reason it's called a stack is because you list the things that you want to do and you put them on top of each other. Um, and then you start doing them from the last thing that you wrote on the list, right? And that's what, that's called a stack in computer science. Uh, so you basically, pile a bunch of stuff on top of each other and start doing them from the top to the bottom. Now, it may not surprise you uh, if you've been following along that um, everything in the computer works the same exact way that it works in, in how we just wrote it. Uh, because a computer, as we talked about before, is a replication in a lot of ways of the human brain uh, because that's we analyze it and we make stuff based on it because, well, the human brain works so well. Uh, so now let's look at this program that we have here. The program is not doing anything special. It's just a bunch of code that I, that I wrote as an example. It's not actually doing anything meaningful. So we have the main function. In the main function, we have integer a equals 5, and then we call the calculate sum function. In the calculate sum function, we have an integer b equals 3, um, and then we're calling the subtract tax function and the subtract tax function does nothing but create a variable called C equals two. And that's pretty much our program. So what happens when you hit the run button on your computer when you finish writing your program? So what ends up happening, if you recall uh, from our previous discussion, we had the code section, the stack and the heap. I did not put the heap here because it's not part of our conversation. So when you hit the run, uh, what happens is the computer takes this program and it puts it in the code section of memory. And then the computer starts planning everything that it needs to do, just like we did with the Europe example. So it looks at the code and it sees um, the first thing that the, the goal is to run the main function. And the main function has an integer a equals five. Um, let's say it takes two spaces. And also, in order to do the main tasks, it needs to do the calculate sum tasks. 
So what it does is it comes into the, into the stack memory and it puts the first thing that it needs to do, the, the, the goal that it has is to run the main function. So it's just like we did with go to Europe, here it's going to write main and it's going to associate this part of the memory to the main function and it's going to say there's one variable a and it's going to assign a space to a and in the space it's going to put 5 because that's the value inside a and then in order to run main what it needs to do is it needs to run calculate sum so it comes just like where we in order to go to Europe we need a plane ticket the computer says in order for me to run the main function I need to do the calculate sum function so it comes here it again associates a part of the memory to the calculate sum function inside the calculate sum function it sees that it needs to reserve space for the variable b so it comes here it says b and then it associates a spot for it and then it gives it the value 3 but then it sees in order to do calculate sum it needs to call the subtract tax function so just like in our previous example in order to buy plane tickets uh, we need to first reserve some hotel, uh, hotel so here again it comes up here it puts it in the top of its list and it calls it subtract tax and inside of it it has a variable c with the value 2 at this point the computer uh, the, the memory tells the CPU that I've planned everything and I'm ready and now what the CPU does the CPU has the list of tasks that it needs to do and it basically just starts doing them just like with our example so it comes here it checks the first thing that it needs to do is it needs to calculate the subtext so it takes this off the memory and it executes it and then it comes here it sees that it needs to do the calculate sum task so it takes this off the list and does it and then it sees the last thing that it needs to do is to run the main function so it takes this and does it so the cpu comes and does all these three in that order and your code will have run successfully uh, and everything is working that's it so i hope this made sense with the with the example of going to europe um and what this will help you with is it'll it'll help a lot with understanding the more complex subjects uh, that come along as we talk but what it will also do it will help you understand a lot of the rules that there exist for programming which uh, in, in my case, when I was learning it, I had to memorize it, but hopefully for you now, um, you'll understand it without needing to uh, memorize any of it. And I'll go through some examples for you, uh, just so you can see what I mean. So here's one rule that we have in programming, and I don't know if you have encountered it or not in the examples that we have done. But the first rule is that you can't have two variables. You can't have two variables of same name in the same function. So if you look at this example here, we have the main function and then we have integer a, float a. Uh, both the names are the exact same uh, in the same function. And what we're saying that this is not allowed, uh, this is incorrect. And if you actually try to write a function like this in IntelliJ, uh, it will it will go it will glow red and it will tell you that it can't run this program. Based on what we've learned now. Can you pause the video and maybe think about why this is the case based on the explanation that we just gave? All right, so the answer is that when, when the computer wants to run this program, what it's going to do is it's going to try to reserve space for the main function, just like we talked about. But then it's going to see it needs to reserve two spaces. It, it needs to reverse reserve a spot for a but then it doesn't know for which one is it this one is it that one so it's going to get confused it doesn't know whether this spot that it's reserving for a um, is it an int or is it a float and it can't distinguish between the two and therefore uh, it can't uh, it can't run the program and that's why you get the error in IntelliJ um, so I hope that made sense if it doesn't uh, let me know in the comments so let's look at the second rule. So here's our rule, uh, which is kind of related to rule one. 
Over here, we're saying that you can have the variables of with same names, but in two different functions. So if I have two functions, uh, void function one, and I say integer a equals three, and then I write another function uh, in the same program, but instead I say integer a equals five, this, this is completely fine and it can run. Why is that? The reason is when you actually run this program, uh, what the computer does, it, it comes to the stack and it says, okay, the, here's, a, here's a segment. This is for function one. And function one needs to reserve a spot for a variable called a, and it's going to assign it three. There's no issue. It's not confused about anything. There's only one a here as far as function one knows. Then it sees it needs to run function two, so it puts it on, on the top of the stack function two and now here it sees it needs a variable a and then it needs this, the value to be five so as far as function one is aware function one function two's world is only whatever it sees in the memory and all it can see is it has one variable called i a which is five uh, but function one um is only limited to this space which the computer has associated with it. it has no idea about what's on top of it or below it and as far as function one is concerned, it has a variable a, which is three, and that's it. Um, that's why there's no issue with having the same variable name in, in two different functions. This in computer science, they call it scope. And you don't need to memorize the name, but I want you to just listen to it, uh, just to be aware of it. Uh, so you can, they're saying that variables only are, uh, they only make sense in the scope of the function, not outside of it. That's a rule that uh, you learn as a programmer really early on. Uh, but the reason behind it is uh, what we learned about what how computers are executed in memory. Um, because function 1 is only aware of the memory and the slot associated with it. So it's okay if other functions use the same names. Not that it's good practice to have two variables named A in two different functions. But in general, it's good to understand that variables only make sense in the scope that they are defined in. I hope this made sense. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about the heap section of the memory, which we haven't touched upon. Um, and yeah, so I'll see you in the next one.